So she takes that stab, and I can strike her on that tackle, or at the end of the time of her foot. Oh. I see advantage of reach. How many of you get hit on the way in? So we're going to talk about primarily how to avoid being struck on the way in. How to gain my weapon and put yourself into a place where you have the advantage. I'm going to teach you how to make me short. I'm going to teach you how to make me short. Right? So, come on. Here's our line. Have an axe. An axe would work with your majesty, but I prefer lessons on turning straight lines into spirals, if you don't mind. <laughs> So we have the straight line, right? Well, this is also a line, right? And it forms a straight line when she extends it. Everybody agree? All right, that's what we call it close the line. So if her line is fastest when it's straight and I want her to be slower, I'm going to do that. I'm sorry? Make her line curve. Exactly. I'm going to make her line curve. I'm going to do that by closing the line. Now her line is curved. Okay? If she strikes in a straight line, well, she's dead. Okay? So now she has to curve to achieve an attack. And that just added six to eight inches onto the distance that she has to travel. I have made her shorter. Does that make sense? Because she has to go farther to get to me. Right? Okay. I have also made her slower. Because she has to go farther to get to me. Okay? My guard? The same holds true if she does it to me. We are on guard, she closes my line. Now she's made me shorter because I can't strike along this line. She will be able to strike me even though I have an advantage of reach. I'm still in her measure. She can't strike me. Does that make sense? She closes the line. Now I have to curve to get to her. Now she's closed it again. Why? Because I gave her a tempo. And she doesn't have to wait for me to be done. So as I go, she goes. And now she can strike. Okay? Now she's still kind of out of measure. And that's the trick. She's got to get to a place where she can strike me on that next intention. How's she going to do that? Anybody? Find the, find the closing line in the attack. Find the closing line. Find the closing line. And an attack, right. Probably, yes, you're right. But we're probably going to have to have her gain a little bit of space for that, right? So, come on, guard. If she's here, she closes. And I disengage. All she does from there, she can't hit me long. She can't hit me. She's too far no. away. So, on that movement, she's going to have to gain measures, all right? All right. Here. Oh, now she's in a place she can strike. All right? On that motion. everybody? Now, let's say I retreat. She's still going to gain some ground. She closes. Here. Boom. She's still got me. Everybody see? Alright. By making my line curve, by denying me the ability to simply use the advantage of the straight line, she then gives herself the opportunity to take a tempo to get closer. Okay? And I want to, I want to be very clear with what she's not doing. She closes my line. She is not taking a step of her back. Okay? Watch that when she takes a step of her back. that she had, this line pose that she had, immediately goes away because her shoulders and her body turn. And then she steps and that naturally pulls back. She makes herself short. Okay? So, come on, guard. Very commonly we find people thinking that they do one and two. They're making themselves shorter by doing that. Alright? From here, they're going, and look, where their sword is. That. Now I'm going to go back in that direction to get it on their body. That's how tall people kill short when they, when they come forward. When they take that passing step forward, I love it. All day. Beep. I'll wait for them on tempo. Okay? So it's, it's counterintuitive. We think that you have to rush to get to a close measure, but that's counterintuitive. You need you just, just do good fencing technique. Come on, guard. Close the line and on my tempo move. Good. And if you don't got it, make me do it again. All right? So she takes it, on my tempo move, on my tempo move, and I am in trouble. All right? She's being aggressive, the line is closed, and she's moving when I move. I don't have a lot of opportunity to get it. Sure, do it again. Nice and slow. She closes, I disengage, she moves. Good. Just go ahead and close and move until you take it where you're She closes, moves, closes, moves. Yeah. Does that make sense to everybody? Every time I move, she 
she moves. With my mobile. With my mobile. Okay? Here's what she can't do. She can't close the line and wait and then close the line. She's doing it. Now I can go where she goes. Does that make sense? So she closes the line and waits. And she waits. Oh. <laughs> Every single time. Every single time. Oh, you do that. That happens to you a lot. Where you close and pause. Yeah, you close as soon as I go. Step and go. Okay, you'll gain that. advantage of leverage, but it's there, all right? So we gotta find a way for her to solve that, and I'm gonna call this precedence to the point. She's been doing this all along. She's my, she's my cadet, so she knows this. So precedence to the point is a method of closing a line, it's a period method of closing a line, that works better than the one most of us are taught. Most of us are taught that this is a line where, sorry, that this is a line where we have sword to sword, we have strong to weak, but we're, we've got our point this is not going to help you, okay? Now, it's true, it gives you the fastest repost, but it doesn't give you any dominance on the weapon above or any dominance on the weapon view. So instead, we do this. If you saw what I did, I just put my point over her weapon a little bit. And I'm going to turn my hand slightly. So you see that? So no longer flat, a little bit angled, and then here. Now I have presses. Now I have leverage down, and I have leverage out. So when she closed the line on me, close it. Cool. Now she's got presence, right? She she has leverage down, she has leverage out. And it's for me to get leverage over her, I have to make a big motion. And what is that? What is it distinct? What is a distinct motion? A tempo. Okay. So she she closed the line there. I gotta do this. That's a tempo, which she can then respond to. Right? Okay. So my guard. So now we have the way that she achieves leverage. She does it with precedence to the point. If I do a big tempo, she disengages and she comes in. Okay? That may not be a strike necessarily, I may move. So she needs to be careful to know when to go and really finally throw that final shot. But so long as she keeps taking my time, I should be Okay? Those are the two advantages of height or length. Okay? Uh, now, where is my total? Thank you. <laughs> yes. Kind of. So, okay, so in period, my point is online if I can see it between myself and my opponent. So if I'm here, I know that I'm not directly pointed at the right. In fact, if I draw a straight line, it'll go over his left shoulder. But as I extend through the line, it will go directly. Does that make sense? So yes, I am off that line, but I'm out of measure from that line. I'm fine, because as soon as I extend through the line, I'll get it. It'll go straight. It'll go where I need to go. So with Mark here, Mark, I'm, in, I'm, in the, I'm in a similar bind to not as drastic and not a similar bind to the medium is just taller. There's a couple different ways to gain. Everybody knows how to close the line, right? <laughs> so I just told you what to do when you're being, when you are being uh, aggressive, right? Now I want to talk about defending yourself against a taller player. So, come on, Bert. Extend fully, extend fully. There, all right, good. He's got two or three, about two or three. I may have to 
gain some time backwards to deal with it, which is also counterintuitive. You think I'm short, I want to stay put so I can hit him when he gets into my measure, but you still need some time to work. All right, back up a little bit. So he comes in close to my line, and I gain some time. And now I've definitely got the advantage, right? Does everyone see it? Bam. Let me do that very slowly. Moves. Boom. Now all I did was put my weight on my back leg. All I did was lean my body down and back, okay? And disengage his left. Moves. Boom. Okay. Does everybody see that? That works from the outside or the inside. He tries to push me out this way. Okay, let's go real slow. Okay, I don't need the left hand though. Oops, I'm dead. That's not good. Here, yeah, this might not be great for me, but it can be done. All you have to do is lean back here. Okay. Now, here's the problem with being high. You're going to put to the outside. Boom. I may have to dominate there. Okay. I may have to bind his weapon down like, in that motion to gain leverage. Yeah. Here. Okay. I may need to do that to drive him. However, I can, all I have to do is lean to gain a little bit of time. Let's say I miss. He goes to the outside, but I don't have it. He tries again. Now maybe I take a step back at the lead leg, but I'm going to immediately bring it forward. Okay. He comes in. Here. Here. This stayed here. So my measure didn't change all that much. All right? Does everybody see that? We're going to try some of this. We're going to try to do this drill. So, find somebody who's taller. Try to partner up. Grab a sword. <laughs> George Silver said that in his, in his treatise on fencing, he said the time in the hand is faster than the time in the foot. Because the, time, because the foot itself is rooted to the ground. Right? It's rooted to the ground. So the hand is faster than the foot. If you're moving your foot first and then moving your hand, you're slowing yourself down by half. If you're moving your foot and your hand, you're actually slowing your hand down to match the pace of your foot. The hand moves The hand moves first. Right? The hand allows you to change your mind. Okay? If something isn't going to happen the way you want it to, and you haven't moved your foot yet, you're probably okay. But if you've moved your hand, or your foot first, you got no other choice. You, you are committed to what you're doing immediately. All right. Time of the foot, time of the hand. We did it. If Balthazar, come on, guard. If Balthazar steps and then goes to line, how do you think it's going to play out for Balthazar? Not very well, right? So Balthazar is down the steps. Right? He has a close line. He has a He gave me a tempo when I took it, and he couldn't stop himself from going. But now he's going to be smart. There's a line, oh, he can't. Now he's going to stay the line. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Well, so here's the other thing. What I just demonstrated leads to one thing you must be very careful of. You're trying to take measure, come into measure on a taller fighter, is that first step where you gain the blade. Because there's no escape in the following measure. If, no matter how So you gotta be really careful when you come in for that first moment. How you do that is you creep in front of the line, and it's just gonna take little steps until you come to the I missed my moment. I missed my moment. He got that tempo off and I didn't strike him in the first time. Does that make sense? He also did 
did the next step, which was nice. I'm going to call this constraint. Alright? Strain the body and sword of the taller fight. Okay, remember? So, this is a bad my line curve. He's going to do it now in a couple of ways. He's going to compound it. He's going to come and instead of just closing the line, now he's going to take a little step to the inside or the outside. Okay? This is not a big step. This is a little section step to one side or the other. Okay? That will be one straight line on and then harder for me to reach it. Okay? And so. And he is well defended. I can even, I am less likely to be able to strike on that line. It isn't a big step, it's a little step. Okay. So here's the drill. Okay, on my guard. You're going to start out of that, right? Basically, every single little bit of the Start here. The shorter fighter is going to turn his hand to start aiming, and then he's going to step. Good. And now he's going to step off line. Now he's going to strike. Tall fighter, I want you to do the stupid. I want you to imagine you his arm and go here. Shorter fighter, if your opponent doesn't have armor on, doesn't have a gorget on, very, very slow. And I mean like this. Keep it away from your body. 
if, go ahead and constrain me, if I have to do this, I'm not that good. Right? As I pull back, you see what I mean? You don't have to trace a small line. So as it closes, oh, just a tiny line. Okay? I can't do that if I stay there. I have to go all the way around. It's too much time. Right? So as you constrain, oh, now I can pull back. Little movement back, small movement back. Okay? Alright, give it a push.
Mason gave me. This is why taller fighters do really well in this moment, okay? If they're on their feet. At the end of the day, a better way for That's the better way to do it. Alright? Close the sword. Transfer the dagger, not in trouble. Now I gotta deal with it. Here's the other problem. Here's the other problem with dagger. So, you got the dagger, right? Maybe you can fix it up at the end. And now we're gonna wind up like this. How many times have you seen this in the SCA, right? And then what happens is this. Right? Wrestle, Presenting that large target. 